While African resistance to European colonialism is often thought of in terms of a white and black or European and African power struggle, this presumption underestimates the complex and strategic thinking that Africans commonly employ to address the challenges of European colonial rule. Between the 1880s and 1914, Africa faced European imperialist aggression, diplomatic pressures, military invasions, and eventual conquest and colonization. This was led by economic, political, and social factors. By the early 20th century, all of the Africa was colonized by European powers except Ethiopia and Liberia. This was called the Scramble for Africa. The European invasions severely disrupted African political and economic structures. There were mainly three factors that led to the colonization of Africa, which were economic, political, and social factors. Economically, the European capitalist industrialization and the high demands for resources contributed to the colonization of Africa. In the 19th century, the European empires just went through industrial revolutions. In order to push industrial and economic growth, the European empires were on high demands for offshore sources of raw materials, such as coal, iron, and gold. Moreover, the empires were looking for more guaranteed markets and profitable investment outlets. Comparing to any European empires. Africa was a much larger land with great resources and huge population for manual labor. Therefore, the Europeans considered Africa as a great place to gain wealth from. The political competitions between different empires and states in Europe also led to the Europeans' desire of Africa colonization. The European nations, such as Britain, France. Germany, Italy, Portugal, and Spain were desired to compete with each other by gaining more power, expanding territory, and exercising military force. Moreover, winning colonies can boost prestige, national pride, and security. Social factors also pushed the European countries into Africa. The Europeans regarded Africans as primitive in the 19th century because of their eating habits, looks, and clothing. Also, the Europeans believed that their superior weaponry and technology entitled them to take over the underdeveloped African regions without the threat of force. Religion belief was another motivation. The European empires wished to spread Christianity to the unenlightened people. Therefore, missionaries were sent to different portions of Africa, and they took over the control gradually. Their book *Things Far Apart* described the pre- and post-European imperialism during the 20th century in Nigeria. In the book, the European missionaries were the first people that came into African tribes and started the conflicts which led to the fall of African culture and religion. On the other hand, As a result of industrialization, major social problems such as unemployment, poverty, homelessness grew in Europe. These problems developed partly because not all of the people could be absorbed by the new capitalist industries. One way to solve this problem was to acquire colonies and export the surplus population. This led to the establishment of settler colonies in some portions of Africa. There was a period of time where it was primarily commodity commerce between Europe and Africa. The relationship was friendly. However, as the scramble intensified, the European countries wanted free trade. After discovering the European powers not wanting to impose and exercise political authority in their lands. African rulers organized military forces to resist the seizure of their lands and the imposition of colonial domination. There were both political and technological reasons. Technologically, 
African forces in general fought with primitive weaponry such as bows, arrows, spears, swords, and old rifles. In contrast, the European forces fought with more deadly firearms, machine guns, new rifles, and artillery guns, thanks to the Industrial Revolution. Therefore, the wars were so much easier for European powers to win. But for the Africans, they still put out the best resistance with the resources they had, and never gave up. Politically, Africa was experiencing profound and even evolutionary changes in its political geography. The old African kingdoms and empires were reconfigured into different political entities. Many new African societies were founded on different ideological and social premises. Therefore, African societies were in a state of flux. Many were organizationally weak and politically unstable to put out an effective resistance against the European invaders. After the First World War, the European powers were greatly weakened. South Africa gained its independence in 1910 from the British Empire, while Egypt gained its freedom from Britain in 1922. The Second World War weakened the European powers even more. After the World War II, nationalists in European colonies stood up and fought for the freedom of their countries. Ethiopia was independent in 1941, and from the 1950s, other African countries began to gain their independence.